Hi everybody, this is Aníbal Rodríguez. Welcome to AB's Witch Journal. Today, I'm going to talk about this great book that I have over here, Mexican Sorcery, A Practical Guide to Brujería del Rancho by Laura Davila, Daphne Lechicera. Something that is very, very important for me is to emphasize that POC, people of color, uh, practices are rich, are so full of different elements. And this book does not disappoint. Mexican sorcery goes over different things. You are going to learn protection. You are going to learn cleansing. You are going to learn love spells. You are going to learn how to connect with spirits and how to perform salaciones. Yeah, you are going to learn a little bit of right and left in with this book. If you are a practitioner, a witch, that does not like left-hand types of works, you have a lot of great protection cleansing spells to pick from this book. I also want to begin by saying that the colors of this book are incredible, very attractive. I do think that the whole, the, the cover of the book itself is wonderful. So great job on that. The book begins with Laura talking about her history, where her practice come from, how her magic came to be. And something that I do feel so connected with Laura is the very fact that, you know, we are immigrants. I understand the process of leaving your country and going to another one with a whole different culture. Adapting yourself to that space is something that I get and I understand. I'm very grateful of the opportunity of read this book. I can feel that sense of longing for your land, for your history, for your culture. So yeah, that was on the emotional side for me. Definitely feel connected with this side. Something that I do love is that Laura is very emphatic about her family did brujería, they did magic, they did uh, witchcraft, and they use what they had at home. And practicality is something that I love a lot with my books. Rarely I'm going to read a book that says, well, now you need 30 ounces of powder unicorn. Practicality is something that for me is very important. And if I don't find it practical, Rarely I'm going to recommend it. I'm not going to say that it's not useful. I'm not going to say that I'm not going to recommend it. Rarely I will because I don't find it realistic and not everyone has the opportunity to afford 30 ounces of powder, you know, unicorn. So I love the fact that she begins uh, her book talking about how her family not only did magic and not only they used what they had at home in the rancho to do their magic, she also is very emphatic that this type of cultural magic or practice is used by everyone, good and bad. And magic or your practice, witchcraft, whatever you want to call it, your sorcery, does not have an ethic. You do. And you use these tools in the best way that you can based on your circumstances and your culture. Love spells are something that we are going to touch upon later on. And there is a big conversation about, is it good to perform dominations and love spells? That's not up for me to decide. A lot of people then and even now perform spells when it comes to talk about love because there is a power disbalance and the only way for them to survive is making that man fall in love with them so they can have a future in this world and in this society. But this book is not about good or bad. This book is about tools and sorcery and Mexican witchcraft, Mexican sorcery. And in the same way that in, in that particular culture, love and domination spells are a thing and mine are as well. For good or for bad is part of the culture and the practice. And I love that Laura did not <laughs> mean their words at the time to talk about that. I'm glad that appears in the book and I'm glad that it's touched upon so eloquently and so clearly when it comes to talk about sweetening spells and love spells and dominations. Great job on that. I loved it.
Now, the book in the first chapter, when we talk about Brujeria de Rancho, it touches upon about the uh, animistic experience and knowledge that the, the culture and the people of that area has about things and of things and how to connect with them. And I love that in this first chapter, Laura gives you a guide of how to work with spirits. I think that the most important rule is the, the first one, do not work with what you don't know. When she talks about do not work with what spirit you don't know, this is a big, big statement. It's more than, I read a book about this, now I'm ready to summon it. Typically, the conversation goes about establish a relationship and a connection with a spirit, any type of spirit. Establish a relationship, a connection with them before you start working with them. And relationship is more than, I read a book about get close to the culture, work with someone that already works with them, let them tell you their stories, study the folklore, study, study the, the tales, the, the different elements of that background, cultural background, start living offerings, start connecting with the spirit, wait for a signal, uh, for a sign of that spirit, approving that connection with them and once that you have a good solidified path now the second chapter is more related about the kitchen and the different elements that they have at home like a molcajete grind your different herbs and seeds she also mentions the cantarito mexicano it's like a clay bowl type of situation and other different herbs and seeds as well. Laura talks about rosemary, also talks about rue, which is a very, very common used plant, not only in Mexico, but also in South America, in my country, we use that as well. She goes over of corn and popcorn, and I mean, corn, maize, maize, is a big, 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 big thing. I was so happy to get to see corn be mentioned in the book, yeah. And of course, chocolate. Chocolate is a big thing in South America and it is my understanding that chocolate itself came from Aztec culture. So it, it was a big thing. Actually, uh, Laura mentions in the book how chocolate was not allowed to be drunk or eaten by priest in, uh, you know, that colony time was made to be sinful. Something very Mexican as well, chiles. She goes over the different type of chilies and how to use them based on their time, their kind to perform magic and use it for spells. Genius. Now, as a Latino, estar salado is a big thing. In my country, when they say to you that estar salado, it's more like a conditioning type of magic that affects your luck, your health, your finances. In Venezuela, it seems it has more like a connotation of you have bad luck. It seems that in Mexico, it has a more curse-like type of effect. There is another, the next chapter, chapter three, the symbols and tools of tradition. This chapter goes over some histories about brujas in Mexico and also touches upon a powerful tool that is very known, the scissors. Something that a lot of practices seems to have in common is having a pair of scissors. I have a friend who's pagan and he has iron scissors that he uses for his magic. I have my set of scissors as well, but they are not iron, they are cheap. I think that I bought it on Dollar Tree and they work wonders. I bless them, consecrated them, and I use them for my practice. Laura mentions that scissors are a big part of that practice as well, which I didn't know. Again, I'm glad to get to connect with that side of the craft and how it connects with I actually want to make a stop in here because a lot of practitioners do not like adding Christian elements. And I do feel that it's understandable based on the history that Christianity has. When you go to South America, you will notice working with saints, working with the devil, but working with saints, working with angels, using holy water, uh, rosaries, candles blessed by priests, whatever. It's not necessarily giving them power. It's more like working with everything at hand. Some spells might require angelic power and you want to use it. From the, 
from the saint work, we continue on to end Salmos, which pretty much seems to be a folk healing. But yeah, it's the act of praying over someone to heal them or praying to a saint to bring healing forth. It's, it seems more connected to people that have the gift of healing. And on top of that, there are other remedios, remedios um, like medicine that is used for that healing as well. Important to be mentioned, the next spells that we get to see seems to be a, related a lot with prayers. And by what I can notice in the book, a lot of these Brujeria de Rancho seems to be more correlated to a prayer. Laura in the book seemed to reemphasize how working with the devil is for Brujeria de Rancho. I'm not saying that every single Bruja works with the devil, but it's a thing. And it seems like he received different names. The Black Charro, El Chamuco, the Black Just Judge. And by the way, just in Spanish is like Justo or someone that is right, righteous, righteous. I don't know how to say, I will put the word here but you know what I mean. <laughs> then we go over different powders, which is something that I do find interesting. I didn't know that in Mexico, they use different powders as well to perform magic. And the cool thing as well is that at the end, and I'm going to try to show it, Laura give us some correspondences, which is very, very helpful at the time to make talismanes and at the time to perform overall. I think that is really cool. I think that this book was excellent. It's not extremely thick to read. I think that it's easy to go to read. I don't think that we can connect with all the spirits really fast. So I feel that mastering this book will take time. Even though it's not necessarily focused on Venezuelan practices, I do feel connected with the book because many things that I get to read here and see here reminded me home. So this is a book that I, uh, I it's hard not to connect with and I keep it close. But yeah, uh, this was <laughs> my book review of Mexican Sorcery by Laura Davila. Go through the book, let me know what you think about it and go and follow Laura in all her social media. Thank you everybody for being here with me. I love you all so much. My name is A.B. Thank you for being here in A.B.'s Witch Journal. Have a wonderful day and see you soon.